welcome back to my youtube channel massa tutorials in this video we'll be solving the third 2022 solutions we are continuing with question 11 to 15 i'll solve the first five questions so that in our next video we we'll continue with the first five questions until we reach the 50th question so stay tuned all right so let's begin Question 11. It reads as simplify 4 root 18 minus 3 root 72 plus 4 root 50 all divided by root 6. So we have to simplify that. So now we we'll take each and every set, then we simplify before we come to the general question. So let's see. 4 root 18. How best can we simplify this? We know that 4 is multiplying root what? 18, right? So I can say that 4 is multiplying square root of 18. Square root of 18 is a set, or we can say that what? An irrational number. Alright, so now if I want to simplify this set, I have to get what two numbers in which when I multiply I'll get what 18. But one of the number should be what a perfect square. Again, I want two numbers when I multiply I'll get what 18. But one of the numbers should be a perfect square or a squared number. So I have 1 times 18, I have 2 times 9, I have 3 times 6. So two numbers when I multiply, I'll get 18. You have this guy, this guy, and this guy. But 1 should be a perfect square. So a perfect square, I have 9. So I'll go with what? 2 times 9. So better still, I can write it as what? Square root of 9 times so my 4 root 18 is equal to 4. Then I have this one can be written as square root of 9 times square root of what? 2. So if I'm proceeding, then 4 root 18 is equal to 4. Square root of 9, I get 3. Then my square root of what? 2. So 4 root 18 can be written as 4 times 3, which is what? 12, then square root of what? 2. So, in simplest form, for 4 root 18, we get what? 12 root 2. So now let's come to 3 root 72. So 3 square root of 72. So now the same thing, 3 square root of 72. Two numbers, when I multiply, I'll get 72. But one of the numbers should be a perfect square. So we have 36 times 2. 36 times 2. So 3 square root of 72 must be equal to 3 square root of 36 times square root of 2. So 3 root 72 must be equal to 3 times square root of 36 gives what? 6, then root 2. So 3 root 72 must be equal to 3 times 6, we get 18 root 2. So we have this. Then we can proceed and get our 4 root 50. So 4 square root of 50. Two numbers, when I multiply, I'll get 50. Then one of the numbers should be a perfect square. So we have 25 times 2. So 4 root 50 must be equal to 4 times square root of 25 times square root of 2. So now I have 4 root 50 must be equal to 4. Now square root of 25 we get 5. Then square root of 2. So 4 root 50 
my v equals to four five, you get to t squared v equals to two. So now, in simplest form, for four root fifty, you get twenty square root of two. Now let's see the denominator. Now we are done with the numerators or the dividend. Now the denominator, the denominator, which is what root six, root six. Now root six, two numbers. In which when we multiply, we get six. We have one times six, two times three. But none of the numbers. They are what perfect square or squared numbers. So we leave it as it is, right? So we have square root of six. So now we can still write it again. So I have four root eighteen. Four root eighteen is what? Twelve root two minus three root seventy two is what? Eighteen root two plus four root fifty. Is 20 root 2 or divided by root 6. So now with this, when we check the numerator, we have like terms. Because here is root 2, root 2, root 2. So they are like terms. So we can subtract and add. So we can write it as 12 minus 18. We subtract the coefficients, then plus. 20. We put that in bracket and then we take one of the root sign, which is root 2, and we divide it by what? Root 6. We divide it by root 6. So now 12 minus 18 plus 20, which is 14. 12 minus 18 plus 20, which gives us 14. So I have 14 root. 2 divided by root 6. Now, listen here. 14 is not inside a square root. But if you check the denominator, 4 root 6, 6 is inside what? A square root. So you cannot say that I'll take a factor which is 2 goes into 6, 3, then goes into 14, 7 times. No. You cannot do it like that because this guy is inside the square root and this guy is not inside the square root. We cannot cancel or we cannot reduce them. But we check this guy. Two is inside the square root. Six is also inside the square root. So we can cancel them because they are like terms. So I can say that two into itself one, then into six, three. So better still, I can write it as four, then square root of one divided by square root of 3. So now here, we can proceed, we can proceed and write square root of 1, we get 1 as our answer, then divided by square root of 3. So 14 times 1, we get 14 divided. Three. Now we have to rationalize the denominator. To rationalize the denominator means we are taking out what the irrational number to become what a rational number at the denominator. So how do we rationalize? Then we have to multiply the denominator, that's the set, by the numerator and the denominator itself. So we have to rationalize. So I multiply here by root three, then here also by root three. So I get 14 times root 3 divided by root 3 times root 3. Now 14 is not inside the square root, so it multiplies the coefficient here, which is what? 1. So 14 times 1, I get 14 root 3 divided by root 3 times root 3. This one is inside the square root. This one too is inside the square root. So I can multiply them. 3 times 3, I get 9. Square root of 9, we get 3. So my answer. In simplest form, I get 14 root 3 divided by 3. Which means that I cannot simplify further again. So now let's see. Uh, options we have question 11 which is option b for boy option b 
Alright, so let's proceed to question 12, which states what? Given that P varies inversely as square root of 2 kill and P equals 2, when kill equals 18, find the value of kill when P equals 21. So now, this one is a variation question. So now, let's see. Solution. Given that P varies inversely, so inversely 1 on the square root of 2 kill. So now, this one is our proportional sign. So we change that to what equal sign. Then we introduce our constant of proportionality or our variation constant. We state that P must be equal to. Now, when I introduce, I get K all on square root of 2 kill. Because this k multiplies 1, I get back my k. So now, I have p being equal to k on square root of 2 kill. We are saying that and p equals 2 when k equals sorry, p equals 12. When p equals 12, when k equals 8. So, p equals 12. So, p equals 12. So I have k all on square root of 2 times k, which is 18. Ouch. Why? Why? k must be 8. k equals 8. So we have this. And p equals 12. p equals 12 when k equals 8. So we have this. So I have my 12 being equal to k on square root of 2 times 8, which is 16. So 12 equals k. On square root of 16, we get 4. So now here, we can multiply. So we multiply. This one is on 1. So cross multiplication. So we have k times 1, which is k equals 4 times 12. So I have k being equal to 4 times 12, or 12, 14, 8. So I have this. So now we can put it back, or we can substitute it back. So I have p being equal to, mine k is 48, divided by square root of 2 k. So now, the question can ask you to find for the equation connecting P and Q. So this is the equation connecting P and Q. And you'll be using this equation to solve the subsequent what, questions. You'll be using that to solve some other questions. So they say find the value of Q when P equals what, 21. So we we'll don't go back to this guy. We start with this guy, then we proceed. So find the value of k when p equals 21. So if p is 21, what will be the value of k? So I have this. So now, what do we do? We have to multiply both sides by what? Square root of 2k. Square root of 2k. Or better still, someone can say that why shouldn't I square both sides of the equation? You can go by that. Two. So, you can see that square both sides. So, if I'm squaring both sides, I have 21 all squared equals 48 on square root of 2 k all squared. So, 21 all squared, which will get 441. So, I get 441 here. Equals now this 48 over square root of 2k all squared. This one we have indices a over b all to the power m. It's the same thing as a to the power m all on b to the power m. So this one, so I can say that 48 squared all on square root of 2k 
all squared. So I have this. So now, let me blend my left hand side here. So now we can proceed and say that 4, 4, 1 must be equal to 48 squared, which is 2304. All on, I have this guy cancels that. So I have to kill. So now here, we can multiply both sides by 2 kill. We can multiply both sides by 2 kill. So now let's multiply both sides by 2 kill to clear off this. Or we can say that let's do cross product here. So I have 4, 4, 1 times 2 kill. Because 1 times that we get 23 is um, 4. So 4, 4, 1 times 2 kill. You divide both sides by 4, 4, 1. So 23 is um, divided by 441. So I have 2304 divided by 441, which is 256 over 49, which must be equal to 2 kill because this one cancels that right. So now here, what do we do? We have to, we want kill, so we divide both sides by a coefficient of kill. So I have 2 kill divided by 2 equals 256 over 49 divided by 2. This one cancels, so I get kill being equal to. So you can punch your calculator divided by 2, which is 1, 2, 3 over 49. So this one is the value of kill when P equals 21, so which is option D for dog, option D for dog, option D for dog. In a class of 40 students, 8 plus 3 X read chemistry and 12 read physics only. If I students read neither chemistry nor physics, find the value of x. So we have this. So in a class of 40 students, so 40 will be a universal set. So you can say that the number of elements inside the universal set is what? 40. And now we are saying that what? 8 plus 3 x read chemistry. So n of c equals 8 plus 3x. So now, n12 read physics only. So we can write it as n of physics only. Then that means chemistry is not included. We are dealing with only what? P. So physics only is 12. Right. If I students read me that chemistry nor physics, so we can say that C union P or complement, that's neither, which is equal to 5. So we have this. So they say we should calculate the value of X. So how can we find for the value of X? Now watch here. Let's draw our Venn diagram and see something here. Because if we can add some of the information, we So we have this. So then that means n of c, we have it as that n of p, n of c, which is what 8 plus 3x, so 8 plus 3x. N of p, do we know the whole of n of p? No. Well, they didn't give us the whole of n of p. So we can say that n of p must be equal to what? Y. N of p must be equal to y. Now, do you know the intersection here? No, but here is 5. So the neither is there. Then my universal set, which is 40. 
Now we don't know their intersection. C intersection Q. Which one are you both? Let's see. M. Right. So now here, I know here to be M. Now I can subtract M from 8 plus 3s. So I get this guy. In order for me to get what? My chemistry only. Then I can subtract this one from that. Right. M from Y. Then I'll get Y minus M. And here, y minus m is what? They give us p only, which is what? 12. p only. So, y minus m is what? 12. Which is 12. Alright. So, now here, let's calculate for our m and let's see. Or oh, let's calculate for our x. So, let's see how the Venn diagram goes. So, I have to add everything inside the universal set. Then I equate it to my fourth. So I have to add this region one, region two, region three, then to region four. Then I equate it. So my eight plus three x minus m, then plus my m, then plus my twelve, then plus five, which might be what forty. So now this one goes, which is zero. So you can say that this m equals zero because it's gone. Then I have my 8 plus 3x plus my 12 plus 5 equals 40. So now, let's do 8 plus 12 plus 5 plus 3x equals 40. So now let's see, 8 plus 12, we get 20. 20 plus 5, we get 25. So 25 plus 3x equals 40. So we group like this. 3x equals 40 minus 25. So 3x might be equal to we have 15. 15. Because when we subtract 25 from 40, we get 15. Then what do we do? We divide this side by the coefficient of x, which is 3. So I get my x being equal to 5. So I have this. So therefore, the value of x, or hence, the value of x is 5. So the value of x is 5. So now let's see option C for cut. We have option C for cut. Option C for cut. So, we have our last part one question, question 14. A bicycle wheel of radius 30 centimeters tends to 100 revolutions. Find in meters the distance traveled. Then we have to take pi, must be equal to 22 over 7. So, a bicycle wheel. So now let's see, we have this bicycle wheel here. Then it says the radius, that means a line drawn from the fixed point known as the center to touch any point on the circumference. Then we have it as our radius. So our radius is 30 centimeters. It tends to 100 revolutions. So if I stand here, then I go round this, I get one revolution. So then that means we tend to do what? 100. We did this how many times? 100 times, which is the same thing as what? The circumference. Right. So now, find in meters the distance traveled. So now, then this one, we can say that we have to find for the circumference. Of a circle which is 2 pi r or we can say that pi d but this time around don't forget our 100 revolutions so we have to multiply that by 100 so our circumference must be equal to 2 times uh, pi 22 over 7 times our radius 30 times our 100 
So our second size must be equal to. So I have my three times twenty two. Twenty two over seven times my thirty times my one hundred, which is one eight eight one eight eight five seven point one four two eight six centimeters. You don't bring any square because we are dealing with what distance. So this is the distance traveled in centimeters. But this time around, the question says we should find it in what? Meters. So now don't forget that 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. So we have 18857.14286 centimeters equals, let's say, a question mark. So we have this 18,857.14286 centimeters, then we have 100 centimeters. So now, if 100 equals 1, then 18,000, will it be more or less? It will be more. So that's a direct proportion. It will be more. So we have this. So 100, we cross multiply. 100 times question mark. Equals one times that we get our uh, eighteen five seven point one four two eight six. We divide both side by one hundred. By one hundred, then here also by one hundred. Here also by one hundred. So now our question mark must be equal to now since. We are dividing what a decimal number by hundred. I told that the point will shift to the what to the left hand side, irrespective to the number of zeros present. So we shift one, two. So we have one eight eight point five seven one four two eight six. So now in what meters? So our question mark must be equal to, let's see our options. Now, they've rounded it to what? One decimal place. So we have to round it. This one is my first decimal place. So I have to check the next number, which is seven. It is more than five, so I can add one to this guy. Then I'll get six. So I'll get one, eight, eight points, six meters. So this is my final answer, which is option D for dog, option D for dog. So our last question, which is question 15. Find the gradient of the line passing through the points. P, one negative half until negative three, negative eight whole number one on two. So we have to find for the gradient. Another name for gradient is what? The slope or the strength or the steepness of the line. So I once told you that we have an increasing function or an upward slope. This one we get what? A positive gradient. Then we have this, we get a negative gradient. Then if we have this, which is the vertical line or vertical slope. We have the gradient to be what's undefined. Then if it is horizontal, we have the gradient to be zero. So now let's see. If we get a positive gradient, then that means the line is what? An upward slope. So now let's see. How do we find for the gradient? We use M to represent that. So M equals my Y2 minus Y1 divided by my x2 minus my x1. So now, this one is my x1, then my y1, then this one is my x2, then my y2. So my gradient, which is y2, y2 negative. So we can change it two times eight, forget about the negative. When you are changing it to Improper fraction, you forget about the negatives, don't use that. So, 2 times 8 is what 16. 
plus 1 is what? 72. So I get negative 72 on 2 minus y1, which is negative half. So when they meet, they form positive. So my half divided by my x2, which is negative 3, minus my x1, which is 1. So my gradient must be equal to, I have negative 17 over 2 plus 1 over 2. They have the same denominators, so we can call it a like fraction. So we can concentrate on the numerators. Negative 17 plus 1, which reduces that to a negative 16, divided by 2. Or divided by, we have negative 4. Because when we add negative 3 to negative 1, we get negative 4. Then our still our gradient is negative 16 divided by 2, which is what? Negative 8 divided by negative 4. This guy cancels that. So 4 into itself, 1 into 8, 2. So we have 2. So my gradient is positive 2. So now this means that the line, the supposed line, is an upward slope or an increasing function. So which is option B for boy? Alright, we've come to the end of this tutorial section. Massa tutorials where mathematics literacy begins. Please do all to subscribe to this channel. Alright, see you in our next video, which is from 16 to 20. Alright, have a nice day. Bye bye.